Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Lurgin Dodges from the Encyclopedia Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Lurgin Dodges. The subject of lodges of colored persons, commonly called Lurgin Lodges, was for many years a source of agitation in the United States, not on account generally of the color of the members of these lodges, but on account of the supposed illegality of their charters. The history of their organization was thoroughly investigated many years ago by Brother Philip S. Tucker of Vermont and Brother Charles W. Moore of Massachusetts. And the result is here given with the addition of certain facts derived from a statement made by the officers of the lodge in 1827. Prince Hall and 13 other Nzergis were made Freemasons in a military lodge in the British Army then at Boston on March 6, 1775. When the army was withdrawn, these Urgins applied to the Grand Lodge of England for a charter, and on the 20th of September, 1784, a charter for a master's lodge was granted, although not received until 1787, to Prince Hall and others, all colored men, under the authority of the Grand Lodge of England. The lodge bore the name of African Lodge No. 429 and was situated in the city of Boston. This lodge ceased its connection with the Grand Lodge of England for many years, and about the beginning of the 19th century, its registration was stricken from the rolls of the United Grand Lodge of England, when new lists were made, as were many other lodges in distant parts of the world. Its legal existence, in the meantime, never having been recognized by the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts, to which body it had always refused to acknowledge allegiance. After the death of Hall and his colleagues, to whom the charter had been granted, the lodge, for want of someone to conduct its affairs, fell into abeyance or, to use the technical phrase, became dormant. After some years it was revived, but by whom, or under what process of Masonic law, is not stated, and information of the revival given to the Grand Lodge of England, but no reply or recognition was received from that body. After some hesitation as to what would be the proper course to pursue, they came to the conclusion, as they have themselves stated, that with what knowledge they possessed of masonry, and as people of color by themselves, they were and ought by rights to be free and independent of other lodges. Accordingly, on June 18, 1827, they issued a protocol in which they said, we publicly declare ourselves free and independent of any lodge from this day, and we will not be tributary or governed by any lodge but that of our own. They soon after assumed the name of the Prince Hall Grand Lodge and issued charters for the constitution of subordinates, and from it have proceeded lodges of colored persons now existing in the United States. Admitting even the legality of the English Charter of 1784, it will be seen that there was already a Masonic authority in Massachusetts upon whose prerogatives of jurisdiction such charter was an invasion. It cannot be denied that the unrecognized self-revival of 1827 and the subsequent assumption of Grand Lodge powers were illegal and rendered both the Prince Hall Grand Lodge and all the lodges which emanate from it clandestine. This has been the general opinion of Masonic jurists in America However, the movement has spread among the Zurgin until now they have lodges and grand lodges in the several states and in Canada and Liberia. As they wear emblems of other bodies, it is presumable they claim them as well. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.